In chapter 3, we talked about impulse momentum equation for a particle. Just to remind you, for a particle, um, for any particle with the mass of m and let's say velocity of anything like v, we said uh, the linear momentum. which we showed it with g is equal to mass times velocity of it and also by taking derivative of this um, we, we showed g dot is going to be equal to um, summation of the, it's going to be equal to mass times acceleration which means sum of the forces based on newton equation then by integrating this and assuming this mass is going from one to another condition like 2 with a different velocity then um, by integrating this equation we found g2 the linear momentum of the particle in the second position is equal to g1 the linear momentum in the first condition or in the first position plus integral from 1 to 2 of summation of the forces dt Sometimes we know what is this force, uh, what is the summation of all the forces that we have on this particle all along this path, so we can integrate it over time and add it to G1 to find G2, right? And in a lot of cases, uh, um, like many problems that we did in class, some of the forces was equal to zero, and in that case, G1 was equal to G2 for a particle or for a system of particles. <coughs> We also talked about angular momentum. Which I'd like to remind you again, the equations. The definition of the angular momentum, again for a particle like this, about any point, like point O, we defined it as rho cross times mv and we showed it with h. h o means angular momentum of this particle about point o, which was equal to rho cross m times velocity. And um, we took derivative of this equation then integrated like what we did for the linear momentum and we figured h o 2 is equal to h o one, the angular momentum in the second condition, angular momentum in the first position, plus integral from one to two of sum of the, all the moments which are acting on, on this particle about point O, dt. And in most cases, we know um, in a lot of problems that we did, uh, we did uh, this um, the momentum about point O was equal to zero. And because of that, we had conservation of angular momentum between point one and point two, which helped us to solve a lot of problems. Uh, we have similar things for um, rigid body, but for rigid body, they are a little bit more complicated. And also, all the details of it, uh, this angular um, linear and angular momentum for a rigid body, they are covered in chapter four, which is not in the syllabus of this course. So we can't really uh, talk about the details of it and prove them here, unless we study chapter four. But I'm gonna give you the final equations, the results of that chapter four. So if you have a rigid body, let's say with the centroid of G, and let's say this guy is moving with linear velocity of v1 and angular velocity of omega1. Then um, the definition of linear momentum uh, for the rigid body is going to be exactly as what we had for um, a particle g is going to be equal to mass times velocity of the centroid. For example, here is going to be 
mass times v1. And if we take a derivative of these two, uh, two sides of this equation and use Newton equation, then integrate it. Again, we are going to have g2 is equal to g1 plus integral of sum of all the forces that we have on this uh, rigid body dt from condition 1 to condition 2. Let's say this rigid body is rotating from point 1 and finally ends up, for example, in another orientation with different velocities like v2 and different angular velocity like omega 2. Then the relationship between uh, linear momentum at po point 1 and point 2, you can, you can actually relate them to each other with this equation. And sometimes we are going to have some of the forces on the rigid body or the system of rigid bodies is equal to zero if some of the forces is equal to zero between 1 and 2 then we are going to have g2 is equal to g1 conservation of linear momentum we have similar thing for um, angular momentum Uh, the angular momentum of a rigid body which is moving with velocity of v and angular velocity of omega about any point like point O is going to be equal to, let's say this vector is rho, the angular momentum about point O is going to be equal to Ig times omega. The proof of this is in chapter 4. I about the centroid times omega plus rho cross mv. For a particle, we had only this part, but whenever we have a rigid body, we have to add ig times omega to it as well. So this is gonna be the angular momentum of the rigid body about point O. And if you choose point O to be the centroid, hg, then rho is going to be equal to zero. So the angular momentum about the centroid is going to be ig times omega. Um, and um, if I take a derivative of two sides of this equation, I'm going to have hg dot is equal to ig times alpha. And ig times alpha is sum of all the moments that we have about the centroid, right? So. Hg dot is going to be equal to Ig times alpha, which is equal sum to sum of all the moments that we have about the centroid of a rigid body. Now, if I integrate two sides of this equation after multiplying both sides to dt, then I'm going to have Hg2 is equal to Hg1 angular momentum in the second position, angular momentum in the first position, plus integral from 1 to 2 of sum of all the moments about point G, dt. So if, if I have an equation for the, uh, the, for the total moments that we have about the centroid, I can put that here and integrate it to see how the angular momentum is changing. And also sometimes, um, we know some of the moments of the centroid in some particular problems is equal to zero from one to two. Then in that case, we are gonna have conservation of linear momentum. The linear momentum between position one and position two is gonna be the same. It's not, it's not gonna change. Um, taking derivative of this general case is gonna be slightly more difficult. We are not gonna go to through that, but in some specific case, like when a rigid body is rotating about a fixed point, like O, we can prove HO 
The proof is quite easy, you can do it yourself. If you start from this definition, then and assume if you assume uh, point O is a fixed point of this rigid body, which is not moving, it is fixed to the ground, it's going to be equal to IO times omega. IG plus rho, which is going to be from O to the centroid, times mass times velocity of the centroid of the mass, it's going to be equal to IO times omega. And again, if you take derivative of this, then um, use the equations that we had before, then integrate it, we're going to have HO2 is equal to HO1 plus integral of sum of all the moments that we have about point O, dt. So this is um, this one and this one. They are general equations. They're always true. For this one, it is true when O, o is a fixed point of the rigid body. And this one is more general. And um, now I'm going to show you how these equations work and how they're going to help us to solve kind of complicated problems in, with a few examples.